This week's groups will be looking at how we draw organic molecules and how we name them. I wanted to do a little kind of preview video on drawing organic molecules to make it a little bit easier when you get to your groups this week. The reality is, is that there are a variety of ways to draw organic molecules. I'm going to look at a couple of examples here and how we kind of translate those from one to the other. So in this picture, what we see is that we see three different structures all representing the exact same molecule. If we look at these, we notice that we have one, two, three, four, five carbons in the first structure, one, two, three, four, five carbons in the second, and there are actually five in the last, the skeletal formula, although we don't actually explicitly see those carbon atoms. And what we want to be able to do is actually translate between these different structures so that if you're given one, you can draw the other two. Now the first one is called an expanded structural formula, or we also call these Lewis structures. This is similar to what we looked at in the previous chapter in drawing out all of the atoms and showing the bonds between them. Now we can draw a condensed structural formula, which is handy because, as you can see, this is a pretty small molecule, but organic molecules get very big, and so being able to write a condensed structure makes it a little bit easier to write out. So what we actually do is we can simplify how we're drawing the structure. And what happens is I'm going to look first at this carbon, and then I'm going to go down here, I'm going to say, okay, it has CH3 because I have a carbon with three hydrogens attached. I go to the second carbon and I see that it has two hydrogens attached, so I rewrite that as CH2. The third carbon again, another CH2. The fourth carbon, a CH2. And the last carbon here, the fifth one, we have a carbon with three hydrogens attached, so we have CH3. We can also write this even a little bit more condensed by saying CH3, CH2, 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 CH3. Basically where we don't put those dashes and our hyphens between the atoms. And this tells us the exact same information. So both of these structures are absolutely equivalent to one another. You don't have to put those dashes in there uh, when you're doing the condensed structure. We're doing it here just to separate the molecules. Either would be considered correct. On mastering, you don't actually put the dashes in um, because you won't be able to. Um, the last one we'll look at here is the skeletal formula. And when we look at carbon, we get to take the advantage that carbon always has four bonds. Always has four. And what we can do is say, okay, if I look at a carbon atom, say this one here, I'm going to represent the carbon atoms at the intersection of each of these lines. And there's also one at the end of each of those. So now what we have is this skeletal structure that's very fast to draw, and we don't actually have to draw in every single hydrogen atom because we can take advantage of the fact that every carbon has four bonds. We know that if I have a carbon here that has two bonds, then I know it must also have two hydrogens. Carbon here has two bonds already to carbon, so it must also have two hydrogens. If I look at one of the terminal carbons, it only has one bond to another atom drawn in my skeletal structure, so I know it must have three bonds to hydrogen because that needs four bonds in total. So we can translate these structures among the three of these different types. So let's look at how we deal with this with a branched alkane. Similar to what we did before, we look at our kind of bigger structure, our expanded structure here, and what I see is I've got a CH3, CH2, CH with a CH3, my branched group here, a CH2 and a CH3. Now when I draw my skeletal structure, what I want to look for is the backbone, and I see that here I have five carbons in a row. So I have five carbons in a row here in my skeletal structure. I also see that I have a one carbon group attached to the third carbon here. And so I want to show the same thing in my skeletal structure, and I do that by just drawing that single line. I know that the end of this is representing a carbon atom, just as each of these intersections and ends of these lines represent a carbon atom. So I still have the same structure. When I look at this atom here in the middle, this carbon right in the middle, I see that it already has three bonds. That means I know it's only going to form one more bond to hydrogen, which matches up what I had in my Lewis structure above with the one hydrogen to that carbon. Now drawing the 
dense structure is a little bit different for these. And the way I look at these problems is I actually kind of read the mo molecule from left to right. First, I'm going to look here at CH3, and I go down here and I see I've got CH3. I look at this, this uh, atom, I've got CH2, and I go down to CH2. Next, I have a CH, so I go to CH, and I also notice that I have a CH3 group off to the side, and so I show that here in parentheses. And what the parentheses show me is that this is a group that's attached to the carbon. It is not part of the longer chain, but the parentheses indicate that it's off to the side. Once I've put that group in there in the parentheses, now I go back to my main chain of my molecule. I have CH2 going to CH2 and CH3 and CH3. So I use parentheses here to indicate that that goes off to the side. Another way to show the, show the condensed structure is actually to show the CH3 group off to the side. Either of them is correct. Um, the one on the left is what we use much more frequently and when you're doing condensed structures on mastering that's exactly what we want to do is this more abbreviated version. Now let's work one of these out. How do we get from our Lewis structure to a condensed structure? I'm only going to show it in the way that we looked at first on the previous one using the parentheses um, rather than the second way, the method on the right, because the one on the left is what you're going to be expected to do on your mastering homework. So what I want to do is I'm going to read my molecule from left to right. I'm going to start here with my CH3, and so I'm going to write CH3, and then I'm going to go to my second atom there. I have a CH and I see that on the side I have a methyl group, so I'm going to put that in parentheses to let me know that that carbon group is off to the side of the molecule, so I have CH3. I'm going to go to the next carbon, I have a CH, but I notice I also have a CL, I'm going to put that in here. Now, notice that on the CH3 I used parentheses and the CL I did not use parentheses. That's because our halogens are always terminal atoms just like our hydrogens are always terminal atoms. I don't have to put parentheses around the hydrogens to indicate that they are attached to the carbon and not a part of the chain. But for methyl groups or other alkyl groups I do need to include those in parentheses because the carbon could be part of the chain but I want to make sure we're clear that it is not part of the chain. So terminal atoms that are, are atoms that are always terminal, terminal atoms, like hydrogen and chlorine, do not need parentheses, and it would be incorrect to use them since they are not needed. So now I've got my CHCl. Now I can continue with the molecule. I have CH2, CH2, and CH3. And I simply read my molecule from left to right, putting in my side groups as I came along. Now I want to look at an example of how I get from a condensed structure to a skeletal structure. And what I want to look at is I want to first identify kind of the backbone of my molecule. And so I'm going to go through the structure and look for the carbon atoms. So I have one, two, three, four, five that are in the backbone of my molecule. Remember that this is in parentheses, so that's actually a side group. And I also have two other side groups here, to a bromine and a bromine. Now that I know I have five carbons in my backbone, I'm going to draw that in. So I have one, two, three, four, five. And so remember, there's a carbon at the end and at each intersection. So that's one, two, three, four, five carbons. And I'm not going to put my hydrogens in there because it kind of clutters things up. And we know there's always enough hydrogens to make it have four bonds. So now I'm going to look through for these substituent groups, and I see I have a bromine group on the first carbon. And I do need to put in there that it's bromine because I need to make sure I know that it's a bromine, not, say, a methyl group or a car another carbon atom. I look at my second carbon in the molecule, and I have another bromine group there. And then I get to the third carbon, and I see I have an ethyl group. And I just put a bend in that because that indicates that there's a carbon at the intersection and another carbon at the end. I don't actually have to write in the CH2Cl3. So now this lets me see exactly what I have, but in a skeletal structure. Now note this is an ethyl group here. It's a CH2CH3 group. If I were to have a dimethyl group, which still has two carbons attached, but in a slightly different way, I would show it in my skeletal structure as, as C parentheses CH3 
two. And that lets me see that there are two methyl groups attached to this carbon atom here, but they're separate as methyl groups and not as one single ethyl group like I have here. And we would show this different in the drawing as well. When we looked at our skeletal structure, if we just draw a little segment of that molecule, we'd see I have a methyl group going in one direction and another methyl going in another direction. So we have our carbon here, that's the central carbon, our two methyl groups, and then the rest of the molecule there. So we're only looking at one little segment. Now we want to go from the skeletal structure to our condensed and Lewis structures. And so there's a couple of different approaches we can take, but the first thing I'm actually going to do is go through and draw in all my hydrogen atoms. I'm going to put those in a different color because I really don't want to draw all of those hydrogen atoms. And so what I'm going to do is just draw in these lines to represent that each of those little red lines represents a single hydrogen atom. Now this carbon atom has three red lines because it needs three hydrogen atoms because it only has one bond here and it has needs to have a total of four bonds. Now I'm going to go to my next carbon and I see that it already has three bonds. So this carbon has a bond here, one, two, and three. And so I need to add one hydrogen there so that that carbon has four bonds. I go to my next carbon, it has two bonds, so it's going to need two hydrogens, so it has a total of four bonds. My next carbon has one, one spot open, needs one hydrogen. This needs two. This carbon needs three. This carbon needs one because it has two bonds to carbon atoms and a bond to fluorine, so it only needs one hydrogen to finish out its quartet of bonds. We need two hydrogen atoms on that carbon, and three here. Oops, forgot that one there. We need three on that one as well. So now I've kind of drawn in all my hydrogen atoms. So now it's going to be a little bit easier to write out my condensed structure since I can see how many hydrogens are involved with this. So I'm going to start again here on the left of my molecule and I'm going to start by reading the molecule and writing down what I see. So for my first carbon I have CH3 the next carbon I have CH, but I also have a methyl group off to the side. I'm going to include the parentheses to indicate that that carbon atom is not part of this chain, but rather is a side group here. Then I go to my third carbon, I have CH2. Next I have CH, but now I have a side group on this carbon, and I'm going to write this as CH2, CH3, because it's an ethyl group. It's a two-carbon group there. Then I go on to the next carbon here that also has a side group. So I have CH and F. I don't need to put parentheses around the F because that fluorine can only be a terminal atom. It could never be part of this chain. And then I go CH2, CH3. So now what I have is the entire structure condensed into this one big formula. Now I'm going to show this as a Lewis structure. Now for the Lewis structure, I know I'm going to retain some information in the way the atoms are connected. I'm going to actually show that connection as opposed to the condensed structure that kind of shows things in parentheses. So the first thing I'm going to do is look for the backbone of my molecule. And I'm going to start here with carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So I have seven carbon atoms. And so I'm actually going to write that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And now I'm going to start kind of filling in what I need around it. And so I can put in my hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. This one has a hydrogen. It also has a methyl group. And I'm not going to show all the hydrogens expanded on that just in, to save a little bit of space here. My next carbon atom has two hydrogens. The next carbon atom has a hydrogen and an ethyl group, so CH2, CH3. Again, I'm not showing those expanded out just to save a little bit of space here on the screen. The next carbon atom has a hydrogen and it also has a fluorine atom. My next carbon has a hydrogen and a hydrogen and then I have a hydrogen 
hydrogen, and hydrogen. So now we're seeing kind of the expanded or almost expanded version where we're showing all the atoms connected. But the thing to do before I go to either the condensed or the Lewis structure, I always want to go through and draw in those hydrogen atoms on each of those. So if I'm looking at a skeletal structure, it's always very useful to go in and draw those in. It makes it much easier to start counting the hydrogens here rather than when I'm actually drawing out these alternative structures.